Hi, this is Romilly with Golden Circle Designs, and today we're going to work on on learning the tête de boeuf stitch. It's also called the ox head stitch in English. Um, you'll generally see it in French. It's also called the wheat ear stitch. Um, in general, I've seen two different versions of this, and which actually surprised me that they're quite different. One's a little easier, a little more straight stitches, and it brings the angle of the um, the ears or the horns of the ox into the opposite direction. But I'll start with the traditional way that I learned it and then I will go to the one I will switch to the one that I used in the blog post for Thursday that has um, more options for flowers, which is what I was using them for. So with the right hand, this traditional one, it's a looped stitch. It's always going to be a looped stitch. It's a combination stitch. So you're going to make as if you were making, it also stands alone. So if you're making, the, you'll bring your thread up here and if you're making the first one, you'll take it down just a little bit ahead of it and you're going to bring the needle back up down here like you would with a feather stitch making a little V and that loops and that holds the and that holds the thread that's your horns of your cow or your ox and then you're going to make a loop and do a, det a detached lazy daisy a detached chain stitch which is another looped stitch Oops. And there's your little head. And this is a little wider than the double, just the little circle, the little um, light colored. So there's your little head. So that's how it looks like an ox with with its with its horns and its head. Generally, this is detached weed ear, meaning that it's not lined up. Most of the weed ear stitches will, from there, bring you back up here and you'll do another one and another one and another one straight down the line usually really tightly t woven together but again we'll show you with the sewing method the reason I'm starting on the left side moving towards the right with the right hand as usual it's designed for doing sewing style like just pushing it through like that and there's your little V and we're going to go down in the same hole that's a little harder to do sewing for this, and I'll make the head a little bit smaller. Playing with it with two hands, and there's your head. So there's your little ox head, your little tête de boeuf. The other version that I saw and that I actually started working on is backwards. It starts with the loop and it puts the horns kind of hanging down like like um, ears so what we're going to do for that version which is the one that's on my example picture is we're going to come up in the middle of where the stitch is going to line we're going to make our detached chain stitch first so there's our detached chain stitch and then we're just going to add two little short straight stitches to it. One from here. Going into that hole. And one here. And again, going down into the same hole. So in this case, I'm not sure you can really call it the same stitch because your horns are on the bottom of the head and but it's similar and it's it's a really pretty little bud stitch I actually got this version of the stitch out of the country bumpkin A to Z of, of stitches book I had never seen it taught this way before it's always been this way so there's your little detached detached chain stitch and up here and it looks more like the bud of a, pl of a flower this way 
and you can make the straight chain stitch the straight stitches here in green much easier than you can with uh, multiple colors on that. But those are the two kinds of, of tete de boeuf, wheat here, or um, ox head stitch. And usually they're listed as all three in a stitch dictionary. So I will, if we'll pause, we'll pause the camera now and we'll move over and work on the, show, the, show you how to do it with the left hand. Thanks. We're back with the left hand for the ox, ox head stitch, also known as tete de boeuf, or the wheat ear stitch. I'm going to work, in this case I'm going to work with the left hand, but there are two different versions that I've seen of this stitch, and I'm going to work the traditional version, the one I've seen the most first, and then I'll show you the variation, just like I did on the right hand. So with the left hand, I'm going to grab it with my right hand because it was way over there, Again, we're working from the right side to the left side when we're using our left hand. This is because it's easier with the sewing method. I'm going to show you with the stabbed. By stabbing, it's a looped stitch. It's a double looped stitch. So we're going to start with, and it sits on its own, and vertically. So we're going to start with as if we were making a feather stitch. We're going to go down here, just straight over, and we're going to make a vertical feather stitch. So we've got that little loop. We're going to come up inside the loop making a little V. Now we're going to add a detached chain stitch or a lazy daisy to it. So we're going to hold that down with the right hand. We're going to come down into the same hole we came up making a loop. And now that we've got the horns we need to put a head on it. And there's the head of our ox right there with the little nose is the catch stitch to hold the lazy daisy together. So you've got a stitch that goes horns. Here, let me bring up to the, for the next version. So you've got horns and a head. Also with it, when it's called a wheat ear stitch this is the head of the wheat, the actual grain, and this is the chaff that people would would beat off if you were making flour. So doing sewing method we're going to make a V just like that and we're going to go around and because of the angle and I don't really have a lot of space on this one we're going to bring it just straight down and I'm actually going to use two hands to make the head but you can just you know, do the same sewing motion. So that's the traditional way of making it with both of the stitches looped. The way I found in the Country Bumpkin books, the A to Z of stitches, is kind of backwards from anything I've ever done before. Um, it's really pretty for flowers and it's actually the one I used in the example picture on the blog. So we're going to make the Lazy Daisy stitch first like this. And there's our loop. It's also a more compact version of the stitch this way. I'm not entirely sure where they got this because you don't have horns on it. So even though they're calling it a tete boof, it doesn't really look like a an ox head. So we're going to bring the first stitch up here and down into the same hole. This is a straight stitch. This would be the horns on the other version. If you turn this over it kind of looks like a dog head with floppy ears. And that could be kind of cute. Used for little miniature dogs. So we're going to come up and we're going to make the Lazy Daisy first. This works really well for flowers as you can see on my example and if you want that just pop over to the blog it will be up the day after this video goes up and straight stitches here up here I'm going to do a lot more examples of what I'm stitching on the blog there's a post on Monday and then there's a post on Thursdays 
and up here and there's your little vertical so if you're enjoying these I recommend subscribing to the video channel or subscribing to my blog or vote both and you'll get the videos come out on Wednesdays in general and the blog post related to the video comes out the next Thursday and every Monday there's another video about what I'm doing in artwork or what I'm doing in my stitching at home and I hope to see you there and talk to me I like talking to people I love to see what you're doing and I'd love to see what you're doing with these stitches and we'll see you next week thanks